Hello everyone and welcome to this sprinting tutorial done by Brackies. I am the CEO of Brackies and I know exactly what you're thinking. Sprinting? Well, why not crouching? Uh, crouching will be in the next video I make, I promise. So uh, in there I will explain how to do crouching functionality and also how to merge the sprint and crouch scripts together. Uh, but first of all we are gonna of course take a look at how to run. So I have as always opened up Unity and I have made a new scene here uh, just to demonstrate uh, how sprinting and crouching would work. And uh, let's go ahead and select the player here and you can see that I have the finished script attached to him called the sprint and crouch. So this is what we are going to be making. Um, let's have a look. So um, this is my default run speed. And if I hold down the shift key, you can see it getting a lot faster. And when I let go, it goes back to normal. If I hold down the control key, oh, I'm sorry, the C key for crouch, you can see that our character smoothly animates into a crouching position. And my speed decreases. And if I now hold down the shift key, nothing happens, so you can't sprint while crouching. And uh, that's basically it for this script. Let me just go ahead and show you what is actually happening inside of Unity. So if I zoom in on our character here, uh, of course when I sprint nothing happens, um, but when I do the crouching, you can see that the capsule collider, or rather the character controller, which is just a capsule, um, gets scaled down. So not the entire object gets scaled. And you might be thinking that, well, that looks really weird. He might be clipping through walls or floors, uh, but it's really just a graphic that looks weird. Um, the reason why it's done this way is because if we scale down the whole game object, stuff like weapons and other things attached would be compressed also. And so you would have to make a crouching animation for your um, your character or whatever you have instead of this object. So uh, I'll leave you to do that on your own, but that's basically how the crouching and sprinting works. Let's get into creating the script. So I'll hit the player and disable the sprint and crouch script. Now I'll go down to the project pane, hit create JavaScript call this sprint, drag it onto our player and double click it to open it up in Mono Develop. There we have it. Now we can go ahead and delete the uh, Pragma strict, you can also leave it be. And uh, we are going to keep both the function start and the function update. I'll just go ahead and space out the brackets, uh, the bracket keys. Um, that's how I like it. So now let's go to the top and declare some variables. The first one is pretty self-explanatory. It's the one called walk speed. And it's going to be a type float. And it's going to be equal to, let's say, 7. So this is just the regular speed. Regular speed. And uh, the reason why we need this is because we need to set the speed to something. Uh, that means that every frame when we are not sprinting or crouching, this speed will be applied. So we'll make a new one called, you guessed it, sprint speed which is also going to be a type float and it's going to be equal to about, let's say 13. This is going to be the run speed. All right, so we are also going to need to uh, make some private variables, private var, and we are going to call this char motor. It's going to be a type character motor and it's, uh, and let's make the semicolon. Another private variable is needed. This one is going to be called char controller. And it's going to be a type 
character controller. There we go. So um, let's start out by in the function start uh, telling these variables what they need to contain. So basically why we need this is uh, because of how we need the um, character to interact. The char motor will allow us to actually move the character forward or I should say change the speed of the character once we decide whether he's walking, sprinting or crouching. This uh, character motor will allow us to um, change his speed. This character controller will allow us to check if our character is grounded. That means if he is standing on something or if he's floating in the air. Because we only want him to be able to sprint if he's standing on the ground. So now let's go under the function start and let's type char motor, the variable we just created, equals get component. And this is um, the type of function you use whenever you need a component from a game object. And since there can only be one of every type of component, we can just write character motor. So this will take the character motor from our game object and uh, play around with that. So now the char controller, this is going to be equal to get component and then character controller. And remember, this script could be made without making these variables. But then you would have to access the character motor and the character controller through the get component each time you wanted to change something. And that could be very taxing on your computer. Remember that every time you need to change something, for example, in the transform or access some information, for example, the character motor or from the character controller, then it's a really good idea to do what's called catch the data or cache, uh, depending on how you would pronounce it, but to cache the data into different variables instead of having to do a search for them. Um, so that's really, really handy. So make sure you do that and uh, the script will run a lot smoother. So now let's uh, go into the function update and let's write var speed, no capital, equals walk speed, the variable above, and semicolon. So now we create a new variable every time it draws the frame, and it's going to be uh, called speed, and it's uh, by default going to be equal to the walk speed. Now we are going to check if character controller is grounded, so dot is grounded, and then we're going to type and, and that is done by making these two symbols and input dot get key. Get key. See if I get this right. Um, left shift. And remember, if this uh, isn't working for you, it's because Unity might have named it as something else or you have gone into the settings and named it as something else. So you can always use input.get key and then key code and then dot and you'll get a list of everything you need. Um, so that's a, a good way to make sure that it will work. But for now, I'm just going to use this left shift. End up the parentheses. And uh, now we are going to make uh, two symbols and it's going to be these two here and uh, these two standing brackets. They mean that it could also be the input uh, or whatever we are going to write here. So these and symbols, they mean and so if the character controller is grounded and the input.key.leftshift uh, is pressed, then we want something to happen. 
and these mean or. So if the character is grounded, yes, he is, and the key dot uh, get key left shift is pressed, it isn't. Well, then we can check if input dot get key and then right shift so that you can sprint with both the left and the right shift keys. So remember the uh, standing brackets means or. Now uh, let's open up the brackets and inside of here we are going to write speed. This variable here equals sprint speed. The one we made in the top. So this script is simply going to allow us to make sure that every time we draw a frame, we want to create a speed variable, which is going to be equal to the sprint speed if um, the character is standing and the key is pressed. If not, it's just going to be equal to the walk speed. But this doesn't actually influence how our character moves. Um, to, to influence that, we have to access the character motor. So char motor dot movement dot max forward speed equals speed. And here we are setting the speed. So here we are making making the actual speed variable. And here in the if statement, we are checking for opportunity to sprint. And here we are actually changing the speed to sprint. So uh, that is how our script is going to look. There's really not any more to it. So let's go ahead and save this and head back into Unity. And let's try to see what happens here. Yeah, we can see two variables pop up, the walk speed, and the sprint speed. And indeed, we have no errors. So we can just go ahead and try to hit play. And when I run forward and hold down the shift, the speed does indeed increase. So that's how to do basic sprinting. In the next video, we're going to take a look at crouching. And maybe sometime in the future, we'll also take a look at how to do an actual sprinting bar so that um, our character can run out of breath. That's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.